Young cat back then, about 19, bust some tables right here. Didn't pay shit, but that wasn't the point. Being around the music, that was the thing, and I was. <laughs> Take this one night, July 22nd, 1964. Who walks in? Mr. Louis Armstrong. You're kidding me. Right through those doors. The man himself. He was in town doing two gigs a night at the Coconut Grove at the Ambassador Hotel. After his last set, he decides to come on down to South Central, hang out with his people. That's how he was, see. Money. Before you know it, he's up on that stage doing his thing. But it was great. Better than great. <laughs> Better than great it had to be. Like Wynton Marcellus says, it was pure spiritual essence. Lewis was playing, the guys were smiling. <laughs> you heard Armstrong play live. I've never been this jealous. Did you get to talk to him? You did better than that? No. Oh, Come on. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Fellow that owned this place back then, a cat named Dick Dryer. Well, he let it slip to Lewis that I played. So Pops, he weighs me up. Man, my heart about stopped. <laughs> But I got up there all the same. We played nearly 20 minutes. Unbelievable. You hearing this? Yeah. So how'd you do, man? How you think I did? Man, you ain't shit playing next to Louis Armstrong. Dip him out. He was kind. He could see I was trying, so he carried my ass the best he could. Remember what you played? Most vividly, Potato Head Blues, Sleepy Time Down South. <laughs> yeah, and Pops laid some cornet chop suey on me and left me in the dust like a whip dog. Whip dog. A whip dog on a wet night. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd digging. Uh, the crowd was most kind. I was born in 1945. And that, that was the moment of my conception. Right here. The crowd's not here anymore. Jazz ain't the draw it used to be. Oh, the place looks great. That's because I found a wherewithal to finance keeping it up myself. What a great story. I know to tell the folks in Culligan and Bottega that story. You know people at Culligan and Bottega? Yes, sir. Just when I thought you were a cool guy. I am a cool guy. The job that I was hired to do, you know how it is. Vincent, man, let him go. Man. I'm working here. Yeah, man, but like you said, let's go with the flow, right? I mean, you like this guy. You even like how he plays. How about some jazz, man? 
Improvisation coming from you. That's funny. Okay. A little jazz for the jazz man. How's this? I'll ask a question. A question. Jazz question. When you get it right, we roll. When you disappear tonight. You don't go home. You don't pack a bag. And you leave town. And nobody, and I mean nobody, ever sees or hears from you again. How do I know you keep your word? I never lie. Ask Max. Max? Have I lied? Oh, he ain't never lied. Means you're a man that lives on his reputation. I'll take your word. And I'll give you mine. If I walk out of here tonight, I will go so far away, it'll be just like I was dead. And one more thing. Those guys, your man here, what's his name? Felix? Yeah. You tell him. If by any chance I get this wrong, you, you tell them that I had to. They laid a grant of immunity on me. It was flip or play ball or go back inside. I ain't going back inside. Sure. What was Armstrong's first musical instrument? <laughs> I know everything there is to know about Armstrong. Ah, uh, well then let's have it. It was a trumpet. It was a trumpet, right? It was a trumpet. <laughs> Cornet. Bought it from a New Orleans pawn shop when he was a kid. Cost him $5. He got a $2 advance on the salary from a fine Jewish family he was working for. <laughs> Saved up the rest. Thin horn. Cost him a dime. Rode the junk wagon and played for the neighborhood. People sold them stuff. 